Hey friends, welcome to Chime Coaching. Rob here. In this video, we're going to be talking about machine learning again, specifically job scopes for machine learning and data science in America, and a little bit about machine learning at UC Berkeley here in America. Friends, thanks so much for tuning in. I'm excited to have another conversation with Raj, who's going to share his own experience studying machine learning at UC Berkeley, but also his jobs and what the job scope is like for you guys who are looking into data science and machine learning. So Raj, go ahead and introduce yourself again, buddy. It's great to be back on our channel, Rob. Um, you know, as I told you, like I, as we've discussed in the previous video, uh, I'm Raj and I'm currently a machine learning engineer at Microsoft. Uh, I studied my master's degree at UC Berkeley. So I studied a lot of data science, big data, data analytics, and uh, of course, machine learning. So I've had uh, like a fair idea of what, what, what all those fields entail and what the job opportunities in there. And I'm originally from India. I come from uh, a city called Pune in India. Um, and that's where I went to undergrad. I studied computer science. Pune and the Bay Area, both are great places yep. that I've enjoyed visiting. And <laughs> so, yeah, I'm glad we got to share those experiences there. So let's yep. talk data science, machine learning, and jobs. You know, I get a lot of questions, Rob, what's the job scope or what's my chances of getting the job? Um, so let's just talk about what is the job scope in America, in the world, with machine learning and data science right now? Right off the bat, machine learning and data science are like booming industries. So since 2000, there's been like a lot of advances and a lot of breakthroughs in the field. So you can now create your own images, like synthesize images of people who don't exist or create your own music. You can ask AI to translate and all of these breakthroughs have come like years after 2000. There's definitely a lot of scope. Companies are adopting more and more machine learning based solutions to their problems. Um, large companies like Google, Facebook, Microsoft, they have like a treasure trove of data and where you have so much data, the machine learning definitely comes into play. So there's definitely a huge demand for data scientists, analysts and uh, engineers, uh, machine learning experts and scientists uh, in the industry, in America and, and, and also I think like in the rest of the world. Um, this is still like a specialty of the occupation. There's there's, there's positions which they want to fill, companies want to fill, but they don't have enough people to fill them. Definitely, definitely there's there's lots of jobs to be had in machine learning and data science. That being said, um, the answer to the question, will I get a job in data science? Uh, it's, it's That completely depends on you, how well you prepare, um, you know, how much you get your hands dirty into the programming, into the study. Uh, because just because there's a job doesn't mean that you'll get it. There's definitely lots of jobs to have and they're all up for grabs uh, mm -hmm. if, if you like work hard enough and smartly yeah. enough. Yeah, if you have the qualifications, the opportunities are there. Yeah. So what are some of the job roles that exist in this field, in this industry uh, with machine mm -hmm. learning, data science, AI? What are these kind of job roles that people might be actually applying for someday? So I'll talk about like a couple of roles uh, and I'll like, tell you like what are the subtle distinctions between them because they like each role requires a different skill set and someone who is like not at all a good fit for one particular role may be an excellent fit for the other. I'll start by talking about my current role which is like an ML engineer a machine learning engineer. So as a machine learning engineer I need to know in depth um, how machine learning algorithms work not just like a proof of concept but also sort of the math behind them. So why some things are happening the way they are. So how basically the machine learning algorithms are really heavy to compute. Some of the algorithms like neural networks involve like a lot of training. So that takes up a long time. So how can I speed that up? So as an engineer, I need to know the in and out of the algorithm. And I also need to know a lot of software engineering. So being able to put my algorithms in production, like problem solving and coding. So the likes of which is available on like Lead Code or Hacker Bank. Uh, as, an, as a machine learning engineer, you need to know a lot of the math behind ML, as well as, uh, you know, uh, you have to have a good grasp over data structures and programming. Coming to the second most, like, I think the second one is the most popular job role. So like a data scientist, that's like probably the hottest job, um, you know, of the century. Mm -hmm. So I was a data scientist intern during my internship i was working with ibm so what a data scientist does is that they do have like a knowledge of these algorithms but they don't have to put it into production what they need to do is like collect like a lot of data validate it for data quality so like looking at the data for missing values or incorrect values or outliers 
uh, sort of modeling that data and conducting some statistical tests like A/B testing or any hypothesis testing, and then uh, trying out different machine learning algorithms on it to see how it works. So, such as can this data be modeled with linear regression? Can this data be modeled with a recurrent neural network? So, these are just machine learning algorithms. Um, there's a very popular framework called Scikit-Learn. It's again an open source Python package. So, data scientists mostly have to like collect a lot of data, look at the data quality behind it, uh, sort of do the modeling and a hypothesis testing, and then gain findings from the data, which is useful for from a business point of view. Mm. So, a data scientist should be able to look at, for example, sales data, and say that okay, we have a drop in sales in this particular month and this can be the reason behind it or we have validated through our experiments that if you make this button blue instead of green you might get 3% more click rate for example mm-hmm. so this is what a data scientist is going to do and they're not going to be putting stuff into production they're going to build proofs of concept so a data scientist builds up the proofs of concept and then it comes to someone like me then we have to validate the algorithm and put it into production so that's what a data scientist does uh there's two associated roles uh such as like which is called like a data analyst or a business analyst and they are pretty close to what a data scientist does but they need to have knowledge of something which we call querying languages database querying languages so sql or sql mm. so what a data analyst has to do is to basically um look at the data they have and create visualizations for uh visualizations and dashboarding for business decision making and this translation from a data problem to a business solution is very important so that's what data analysts have to do and they need actually a lot of creativity in their job because uh, it's it's not simple to look at 10000 rows and decide you know what stuff can be applied how can we visualize it so for data analysts the skills to know are sql and tableau some there's a tool mm-hmm. called tableau for visualizations oh yeah very popular yeah <laughs> um there's like a fourth which is a less known lesser known one uh it's called a data engineer mm-hmm. and it's sort of a hybrid between a data scientist and an engineer and actually it's a hybrid between all of the roles that we discussed <laughs> so they do everything you know, yeah they do everything kind of <laughs> so all the data that the data scientists use or all the data that me as a machine learning engineer will use and will generate has to be stored somewhere and somehow and it has to be stored in the way that is most efficient for me to access for anyone to access for a service to access and it should be stored in a reliable manner so if there's a, there should be no downtimes if like a server crashes then you know we should have a backup and all of those things so what a data engineer does is he designs like the way data is structured he designs that the way that data flows between different services and what's the best way of doing that mm-hmm. so data engineers uh, do need to know uh, sql as well but they also have to have good programming skills uh if you want to be a data engineer there is a language a programming language called scala uh it's very similar to java but uh scala st- scale the name scala is comes from scalability mm-hmm. so yeah it's scalable language so it's scalability reliability efficiency all of those keywords they are for a data engineer So to summarize if you want to be a data engineer you would need to know about databases uh programming and scala if you want to be a data analyst or business analyst you would need to know some python some uh sql uh and preferably tableau if you want to be a data scientist you need to know python pandas numpy uh keras and scikit learn the python libraries we should probably link this below i think it's too much information yeah. we'll we'll put all that link in the description for sure yeah and if you are a machine learning engineer you need to know the production frameworks like uh, tensorflow pytorch and also like general purpose programming languages like java and python that is a long sorry for the long answer but no, that's i think great. it covers everything <laughs> no that's a great breakdown and give people to know what to expect you got to graduate early this year from the very prestigious uc berkeley uh, did your masters in machine learning there which is really exciting what are just a couple highlights and experiences there uh from doing your masters there at UC Berkeley. My course was called Masters in Information Management Systems. Mm-hmm. So it's called the MIMS program. Uh it's a really really interdisciplinary program. A lot of people from really diverse backgrounds. So in my classes I had people from computer science like myself, 
but also from people who studied electronics people who studied economics people who studied architecture psychology sociology everyone uh, so it's a really interdisciplinary program and basically like what i enjoyed most about my masters and the program was that it's really customizable like i could make it as technical as i wanted to because i wanted to get into machine learning there were some people who were more into like the analysis like the data analyst side so they could take courses like databases and visualization so it was really really um you know customizable um and it was a great experience but what what it offered me more was like an a gateway to the uc berkeley campus and the uc berkeley research environment so the the computer science department of uc berkeley is probably the most prestigious one uh, oh, yeah, in the us definitely. yeah so you think of what you're interested in there's almost always someone working in that so for example as i told you my interest was using machine learning for security and i was able to find like three or four professors who were researching in that field i was able to get involved with um, uh, the security and ml research group from the cs department it was with professor don song and she's really respected in the field i had a chance to work with her phd students and her postdoc scholars and i was able to like lead a project on my own uh, under their guidance and you know we were able to get a, a publication at a really good conference from it wow um yeah and it was in like a field that i wanted so it was to do with detecting malware with machine learning so nice. as you see it's like the a good intersection that i wanted there's also a really cool professor called professor hani farid uh he works a lot with deep fakes and fake news so i was also able to do like fake news detectors on bot generated news detectors uh with machine learning and i was able to work with him Wow. So the experience was really good. I think UC Berkeley like with the prestige um the, the prestige is not just a brand name. It is the prestige is because it's the brand name is built built by like the professors and the research that happens there every day every single day. Yeah. The innovations that happen there every single day. Yeah. So, so after that project you did about the fake news, do you feel like every news is fake news now? Uh, I definitely look at it from that perspective. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're kind of tainted now, you know. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm kind of tainted now. Awesome. Yeah. Well, yeah, sounds like a really great experience. Great program. If you guys have more questions about UC Berkeley or there, let Raj know. But lastly, you've also, you know, been working in an internship. Was it Intel or IBM? My internship was at IBM. IBM. You're working for Microsoft now. Let's just wrap this up real quick just highlights lessons learned you know what's there actually the reality of actually doing these jobs in america now as an intern mm -hmm. as a full time in machine learning what do people need to know as we wrap this video up you know one of the things that um helped me study machine learning and data science was like kaggle or you know the data sets which were available but once i actually started working uh, even in my internship and even my full time role i realized that data is really hard to come by uh it's very rare that you're going to get a csv file perfectly tabulated data pretty columns clean data you know no unexpected errors thrown when you try to process it mm -hmm. uh all of that stuff so i think the, the the reality hit me when i i it took me like in my in my internship in my first two weeks it took me two weeks just to get the data so you know navigating through the organization different stakeholders getting the data then processing it and it was really noisy because it was scraped from pdfs i think that was like a surprise for me eventually my learning outcomes were that you know if you want to do the job well or if you want to even get the job you need to demonstrate those skills it doesn't matter what course you come from but you yes. need to show that you have those skills if mm -hmm. you have those skills they would be fine hiring you even if you are like a construction engineer but you show the skills what why would they have a problem with it that was like my um take away from it well raj this has been incredible learned so much about machine learning and data science jobs and from just your own experience so thanks so much for sharing with us thank you so much for having me here rob awesome and if you guys this was helpful don't forget to give a big like and thumbs up to say thanks to raj and sharing his story with you guys be sure to subscribe to chain coaching cuz we want to continue to help you guys out we got more great videos be sure to check out Roger's other videos as well on machine learning and and his experience connect with us online if you guys have any more questions and we'll see you guys next time at chain coaching cheers